Good morning or good afternoon and welcome to Apex Instant Tips episode number 95 uh, brought to you every Friday at 12.05 Eastern Time. I'm Anton. We have with us today our guest Hayden. Hayden, welcome. Uh, glad to be here for this, our final episode of 2022. Yes. Um, so that's right. We're going to take a couple of weeks off. We'll be back in January. Um, that's right. And uh, today is yet another episode inspired by episode 93, in which we um, listed various things that inspired us from the Apex Builder design. Yeah, and I think that this is, um, this is a way that we can perhaps um, improve on the Apex Builder implementation um, mm -hmm. by, uh, by using their design, but, but building it in a different way. So with that little teaser, um, I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. We'll get started right away. Um, before I actually get started, though, I'm going to say it's going to seem like this tip is super simple, um, but it took a lot of work to get performance and all of the little pieces of this to work. Um, it's not that much code, but like first, apex.oracle.com, in particular, my workspace in apex.oracle.com is a worst case scenario for performance on these kinds of things. Um, Fascinating. Yeah, because it's, there's, there's just so many, um, there's so many workspaces and my workspace in particular has been around for 20 years almost. And I have, I, I probably have a thousand applications in my workspace, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, that is funny. So, so the, uh, right. I'll, I'll set it up. Um, uh, so the, the, the feature that uh, we were admiring about the uh, design of the Apex workspace is the uh, what I call the redundantly available options as you navigate through lists. So if you click on SQL Workshop at the top there, uh, you get a repetition of the of the menu options at that level. So you see Object Browser in the dropdown. You also see Object Browser as a list when you get to the page. I think most people don't design that way, but I think that it, it is a nice design feature. Right. Same thing with application builder. You get the same, it's, it's very much the same thing, right? Great. So the question is, how do you, how, how do you think they implemented it? And you know what, I'm going to go ahead and click start here because ah. we don't want to, we don't want to take more than five minutes. So how, how do you think Apex, the builder implements this to get these two things? Well, if I were to hazard a guess, it would be that they um, have to maintain separate uh, components to represent the uh, uh, synchronous information. So they they have to, uh, and they're, they're thereby signing up to synchronize between their various components as they maintain. So whether the option is available, like the order in which it appears, like they have to, I, I'm sure it's a bit of a headache. Yeah, yeah, and that's exactly what's going on here. And so if if they reorder one of these, like you said, they have to reorder this one. If they change the name of one of these, they have to change the name of this. Authentication schemes, build options, it, it just goes on and on and on, right? All the things. Yeah. It would be so much easier if you could just say, put my children, whatever page I'm on, put my children here. And is there a declarative um, component that allows you to do this? Not anymore. There used to be in earlier versions of Apex, it, it, you could just say, show my children or show, or show my siblings. You can't do it anymore. Um, but I recreated that. So, nice. so what I did was you can see here, we have our own application. Transportation uh, is right here, automotive vehicle, bike, train. So let, let's actually demonstrate how easy it is to keep them in sync, in sync. So let's go ahead and create another page. We'll do that first. Um, so I'm gonna just go here. I'm gonna create a new page. Um, and so, Hayden, you want to give me another uh, type of transportation? Uh, let's do helicopter. All right, I'm going to do helo because I don't want to have to type. I'm going to say uh, my parent will be um, transportation. And so I've got helo. I might as well put in a nice icon on here. Um, maybe there's a helicopter icon. I don't know. Oh, look at that. There it is. Beautiful. I'm going to create that page. I'm going to run. I'm gonna refresh this page and with any luck, our magic will show um, that we have both a helicopter on the left and a helicopter on the right. And the performance is gonna be great because I spent a lot of time working on performance. Um, and there we have it, helicopter. And the, the 
and, and uh, it, the, the magic, as I understand it, is when you chose the um, uh, where it belongs in the navigation bar in, in, on the left, it's adding it to a view that you can then query that you can then display on the right. That is exactly the magic. Um, I created a single view, a single, um, uh, whatever it's called, a single navigation list, a single list. And so I named my list navigation menu child entries. So I have a navigation menu and that's static. And then I have navigation menu child entries. And what it does is it figures out what page I'm on. It queries the view right here, Apex application list entries, figures out the page I'm on, that's the parent page. And then it finds the children of that parent. And it does a few other things that I'm gonna talk about in a second. But so it's it's this you have the same list displayed on all of these different pages. Yes, so exactly right. So on this page, um, I have the child list on automotive vehicle. I also have my same child list right here. Um, and I'm going to say to you, the performance isn't looking great right now. It usually is. This is apex.oracle.com in this moment looking a little bit bad. But look at this truck, right? Truck should have a better icon. I should definitely be able, normally if I didn't do whatever we've talked about, I would have to go change the icon here and the icon here, right? But now you only have to change it in the, in the navigation menu. Right, just the static list. I don't have, I never have to touch this one. Uh, I just go to this, the, the static list navigation menu. And if I change something here, uh, for example, truck, and I put an icon, the appropriate icon on here, or if I put a build option, if I do anything at all here, um, and I don't know if there is a, a truck. Oh, there is. Great. Um, nice. Apply changes. I've got 36, 35 seconds. I'm going to refresh my page here. Hopefully, we'll get a truck icon in both places. And then I'm going to point folks to uh, what you need to do. In order to get all of this to work, you need to know whether or not you should show each of these. And the key to that is that um, there's, there's a function you called Apex plugin util is component used, but it returns a Boolean and you can't mm -hmm. use a Boolean in SQL. So I can, I create another one where I just convert that Boolean to a yes or a no. And so you need that little bit of functionality. I'm going to hit stop on our timer because this blog will get you everything you need. It's all of the code you need. But um, if you really came for just five minutes, do all the things you're going to do, get out of here. You've got all you need. And I'm going to yeah. say that we, completed the tip in five minutes. Yeah. <laughs> right, because this is all you need. But I'll spend another second here, Hayden, um, just talking about the actual code of the dynamic list itself. Um, it's really pretty confusing. The, um, if you looked at the help for all of this, it looks like, the, the help's just not really good on this one. I, I usually like the Apex help, the, the help's not good. You have to have exactly this many columns it doesn't matter what you call the columns, but in the help, they suggest, suggest this first column be called level. Mm -hmm. Level is a reserved word. So, so this query is going to work for you. Um, and if you just use it just like it is, it's going to work for you. Um, uh, the next thing I'll, I'll say is down here, um, you might need to change this because you, you need your list, whatever your list name is. Um, right. And then... I'm going to skip this for a minute and come back to it. This right here is component use. That's our function. It checks the build option. It checks the authorization scheme, the condition type. It checks all the things that you need to check. So if you do anything on your, your normal nav menu, it will flow through to my, my children here. Um, then the last thing is this right here. This figures out what page you're actually on. Um, and I went kind of far into it. Um, I'm looking at what it usually has is ampersand app ID dot. I have to split that up because if I mm. didn't split this up, it would actually do the replacement and put the number in there. Um, but sometimes people will change this to use app alias. We talked about that last week that you might actually want to put the app alias here instead of app ID. You might want to put the lower of the app alias or you might actually have put the app ID. I don't recommend this. This is bad practice to actually put the number there, but 
Some people will have done that. So this will get the actual page that you're on, regardless of the, the way that you defined it in your nav list. Um, well, uh, an impressive uh, number of uh, problems that you've anticipated. Yeah, and hopefully, um, hopefully that will actually uh, cover what anybody would need for this scenario. Um, and I have to say, you use this once and you don't have to go reorder something or change the name. It's, it's so much better. Um, so there we have yeah. it. Um, That's and uh, it sounds like the Apex team is, uh, itself could make use of this to uh, change how their own design pattern works. Yeah, ag agreed. And, and I would love to have them go back and have these other templates that you could use that says, give me my children, give me my siblings, those, those kinds of things. I actually, like I said, I have another, another query that gets siblings. I have another mm -hmm. query that gets um, uh, um, a, a deeper uh, trailing going down. Uh, <laughs> a, a recursive, like connect by query. Yes, yes. It, it, interesting, Stephen just used this exact same thing uh, this week. So, <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, so I'll say I'm going to also admit to I have the slightest, tiniest bug in this code. Um, and it's something that I realized as you and I were getting ready to do this show. Do you remember what the bug is, Hayden? Uh, yes. Uh, the, um, you're, you're referring to the wrong column in the Apex applications list entries table uh, uh, because this might break in the situation where you have translation. Yes. So um, Rich asks if there's missing indexes. No, Rich, I don't think so. And in, in fact, it, it really is fast. I've done a whole bunch of things to make sure it's super fast. And it is, it, whatever reason, it was slow at that moment. But um, it's just that it's super complicated, right? This, this underlying table has millions of rows in it on apex.oracle.com. Most people's installations are not going to have millions of rows in their static LOVs. It's just, but I wanted it to work. So I, I, did the, I took the effort to make sure that my query was fast. Returning to your point, though, about the languages, so I've fixed it, but the problem is this. If this is a multilingual app, if your application is multilingual, you're going to get duplicate entries in here. I haven't put in to the where clause um, to get the right language um, based upon your current language. Um, yeah, the, the, the view has a primary application ID column that we could refer to instead. Right. Well, in, that, in fact, I did make that change. I am referring to the primary application okay. ID column now, but I'm not doing anything about the language. And mm -hmm. that's, that's the issue. Um, I don't know, and I'm going to have to look into getting the actual application ID that you're running. That would solve it for me. But I don't know. I, I know colon app ID gets me, colon app ID actually gets you the primary app ID. But what I need is the app ID that's actually being run. And I don't know how to get that. And I don't know if anybody does. So this is my question to the Apex community. And maybe I should put it out there on that. Um, there's this kind of like micro blogging site that fo folks use. Are you familiar with it? It's got like a little bird, a little blue bird or something. Oh. <laughs> yes. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, we should, uh, we should bring it up on Twitter. Yeah. I hadn't thought about it till till we were talking just now, but I'll, I'm going to do that. I'm going to I'm going to um, I'm going to twit out there about it, and uh, um, maybe we'll get get an answer. So I'm sure somebody okay. knows. So uh, I guess Hayden, I don't know if I'll talk to you before the new year, but I'm not going to talk to anybody else. Well, on this show anyway, uh, until the new year. So yes, uh, happy holidays and uh, happy new year. Yeah, great. I guess that's it. Bye, everybody. Do all the things. I guess.